Hello and welcome to the Young Author Pod and today we will discuss about the nerve injuries. Nerves can be damaged by pressure, stretching or cutting injuries. Nerve injury can interrupt signal transmission to and from the brain leading to muscle dysfunction and a loss of sensation in the injured area. Let us quickly review the anatomy of a peripheral nerve. Each segment of spinal nerve is formed by the union of its dorsal root with its ventral root. The cell bodies of the motor neurons supplying the peripheral muscles are clustered in the anterior horn of the spinal cord and the cell bodies of sensory neurons are situated in the dorsal root ganglia. The nerve fiber or axon is an extension of the nerve cell. The nerve fiber can be either myelinated or unmyelinated. In the myelinated fibers, the Schwann cell by rotation forms a multilaminated structure that encloses a myelin sheath around a single axon. The segment of myelinated nerve fiber enclosed by a single Schwann cell is referred to as an internode. The point at which one Schwann cell ends and the next begins is called the nodal gap or the node of Ranvier. The axon with its Schwann cell and myelin sheath is covered all around by a delicate tube-like fibrous tissue membrane called the endoneurium. When looked longitudinally in a peripheral nerve, these endoneurium-covered axons are packed together to form a fascicle. Each fascicle is surrounded by a denser layer of perineurium. These perineurial sheets are strong enough to be handled by fine instruments during surgeries of nerve repair. The groups of fascicles that makes up a nerve trunk are encased together in a dense connective tissue membrane called the epineurium. The two most commonly used grading system for nerve injury classification are Seddon's classification and Sunderland classification. Seddon described three types of nerve injury in the order of increasing severity. Neuropraxia is reversible physiological nerve conduction block resulting from minor contusion or compression of a peripheral nerve. Here, the axon cylinder is intact with minor edema or breakdown of a segment of myelin sheath called demyelination. Transmission of impulses across the nerve is interrupted, but the recovery is usually complete in a few days or weeks. Examples include crutch palsy and Saturday night palsy. Exonotemesis is a more severe form of nerve injury with breakdown of exon but preservation of endoneural tubes and surrounding soft tissues. Valerian degeneration occurs distal to the injury. Spontaneous regeneration with good functional recovery can be expected. It is usually seen after closed fractures and dislocations. Neurotemesis is the most serious injury. In this type, there is complete division of the nerve or severe avulsing or crushing injury. The axon, the Schwann cell and the endoneural tubes are completely disrupted. Depending on the severity of the injury, the perineurium and epineurium are also disrupted. Spontaneous recovery is not expected in this type and surgical intervention is usually required. It is seen usually in association with lacerated wounds, open fractures and gunshot injuries. The Sunderland classification grades nerve injuries according to increasing severity from first to the fifth degree. First degree injury. This injury coincides with the neuropraxia of Sedan's classification and has similar features. 
Similarly, the second degree injury corresponds to sudden exonotemesis. The third degree injury is worse than exonotemesis. In this, the endoneurium is disrupted but the perineural sheaths are intact, limiting the internal damage. In fourth degree injury, along with axons and endoneural tubes, perineurium is also disrupted and only the epineurium is intact. Internal damage is severe but the nerve trunk is still in continuity. The fifth degree injury correspond to neurotemesis. In this, the nerve trunk is completely divided and requires surgical repair. Second and third degree injuries shows an advancing tunnel sign. So this was a brief description of types of nerve injuries. We will discuss the Valerian degeneration, the importance of tunnel sign and the treatment of nerve injuries in the next video. If you like this video, please let us know in the comment section below. Please subscribe to the Young Orthopod. We will be back with another video in orthopedics. See you soon.